Hi everybody and welcome to your bonus video, five minerals we need from our food. So this is a follow on from lesson three in your diploma in nutrition course and we're looking at five of the minerals I didn't speak about in that lesson. Okay, so the less, uh, in the lesson we discuss seven minerals all in all and today we're going to be looking at five more. So let's get started and we're going to start with chromium. Chromium is widely found in our food supply and most foods only supply very small amounts but it's found in things like meat, whole grain foods as well as some fruits and vegetables. Now it is thought to enhance the action of insulin and insulin as we know is a hormone that's very important in the metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins and fats but more research is needed about chromium to determine its full range of roles in our bodies. Now it has been suggested but not proven that taking chromium, chromium can be useful in cutting food cravings and older people and people who have like a highly processed diet or a high sugar diet are usually more vulnerable to chromium depletion and lower levels of chromium in diabetics may make blood control more difficult so if you have diabetes ensure you do get enough chromium from the food sources I mentioned. The next we're going to look at is copper. Now, many foods contain copper, nuts, shellfish, liver, and um, they're about the richest, um, the richest sources. Now, copper is involved in the production of red blood cells. And as we know, red blood cells carry oxygen around our bodies. So it's also thought to be important for infant growth, brain development, the immune system and strong bones. But most people get enough from their diet. So it's not a high concern um, for deficiency, which is great. The third mineral we're looking at today is sodium. So some people get mixed up between salt and sodium. Salt contains sodium. So the body uses sodium to control blood pressure and blood volume. And your body needs it so your muscles and your nerves work properly. Now, sodium occurs naturally in many foods and table salt is also known as clo uh, sodium chloride. But milk, beets, celery are naturally contain, um, naturally contain sodium. Drinking water also contains sodium, but the amount depends on the source of that water. Now, sodium is added to food products in different forms. I'm sure we've all heard of monosodium glutamate, MSG, um, sodium nitrate, baking soda to name but a few and things like Worcester sauce, soy sauce, onion and garlic salt or, or bouillon or stock cubes contains sodium. Processed meats like bacon, sausage, canned soups, ham also contain added sodium and fast foods generally are quite high in sodium. Now too much sodium leads to high blood pressure in some people. So the recommendation each day of sodium is 2,300 milligrams. That's the equivalent to about one teaspoon of salt. So those with kidney disease, congestive heart failure or liver cirrhosis uh, need to much lower amounts of sodium in their diet. And there is no recommendations um, of sodium for infants, children or teens. Our fourth mineral is manganese. Manganese is found in things like whole grains, avocados, pulses, dark chocolate, egg yolks, nuts, seeds, pineapples, green veg. And maple syrup is actually quite a tasty form of manganese. It plays an important role as a natural antioxidant um, in, with the enzyme superoxide uh, dimutase. SOD and this helps to fight against free radicals. It also helps with thyroid function, blood sugar control and the formation of collagen and energy metabolism. But if you require high amounts of iron or calcium or you're taking a high dose of both of those minerals, your manganese stores may be depleted. So it's just something to be aware of with that as well. And our final mineral is molybdenum. Uh, 
Oh, that's a bit of a tongue twister. This is found in things like dairy products, whole grains, peas, beans, and tofu. And it assists with the functions of enzymes in your body. It's very important for normal cell function and growth. And there were claims that this mineral is helpful with libido and tooth decay, but these claims are unfounded. All right, so thank you for listening to the bonus video. I hope you found it interesting. And uh, we'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks. Bye.